Before you watch this video, please consider subscribing. It would be a great help to get 1,000 subscribers. Thanks. Enjoy the video. Tom Gates' Spectacular School Trip by Liz Pigeon. Whatever you do, don't look at the achievement chart. It's not like I meant to get three sad faces. It just sort of happened. Marcus didn't help much. He only got one sad face, or two, if you count his actual face. And the worst part is, none of them were my fault. It's true. I got this sad face in quiet time. I was just doodling a nice picture of Mr. Fullerman with big eyes, teeth and hair. Lots of it. <coughs> when Marcus Meldrew, who's a nosy Parker, started laughing so loudly. You'll get in trouble if Mr. Fullerman sees that. Shh, he won't see it if you keep quiet, I said. Too late. Tom, that's one sad face for you. Oh, see what I mean? Not my fault. Then, last week, I was round at Derek's house getting my homework done on time for a change when Rooster jumped up, grabbed it and then ran off. Mr. Fullerman was not impressed. So let me get this right. The dog ate your homework again, Tom. Yes, sir, I said. It's true. That's your second sad face of the term, Tom. Oh! I couldn't believe I had two sad faces. Then, this morning, I woke up really early for school and went to meet Derek, who was surprised to see me on time. Tom, you're here. Don't sound so surprised. Come on, let's go. We don't want to be late, I said. Derek and I did a fast walking and tried not to be distracted by anything. Then Derek suddenly stopped and shouted, Hey Tom, look what I found, 50p. We had a high five and went straight to the shop, but, si but deciding what to buy was tricky. Should we get one packet of cheesy puffs and two fruit shoes? Or how about one caramel wafer to share? Or maybe a whole bag of broken biscuits? Derek suggested, which was a good idea. But the sh shopkeeper spotted us checking which bag was the biggest and said, Come on, you two. They're all the same size. They're not the same size. Everybody knows that. While I checked the bags, Derek spotted that the latest copy of Rock Weekly had do three on the cover. Tom, look at this. So we took a sneaky peek through the whole magazine while the queue went down. Then decided to buy one caramel wafer to share. It's a good plan, Derek agreed. But when we got to the front of the square, all the wafers had gone, which was a disaster. No! Luckily, the shopkeeper saved the day and found another box. So we got a wafer, after all. That's a relief, Derek said, and I agreed. I split the wafer in two and enjoyed eating it slowly. The trouble was... We spent so much time in the shop that we missed the start of school. Ding, ding, ding. Uh-oh. You're late, Tom. That's three sad faces. But, sir, I say in a please don't give me another sad face kind of way. If you get one more sad face, Tom, do you know what will happen? Mr. Fullerman asks. Sort of, sir, I reply. Then Marcus sticks his hand up and starts saying, Sir, sir, I know what will happen. Marcus is so annoying. He's off the scale on the annoying meter. He'll get a detention, sir, and he'll have to do lots of extra homework too. Thanks for reminding me, Marcus, I say. Anytime, smug. You can put your hand down, Marcus, right down. As I was saying, anyone with four sad faces would not be allowed to go on the school trip. Mr. Fullerman tells us, school trip? What school trip? I ask. The school trip that you won't be going on with your four sad faces, Marcus says. So I point out, I don't have four sad faces, Marcus. Yet, he adds, quiet down. I'll tell you more about the school trip later. Right now, here's something else to look forward to. This week's homework. Oh, we all groan. It's very special homework, Mr. Fullerman says, trying to make it sound interesting, like that even exists. 
I whispered to Amy. It's going to be displayed for the school open day when my parent, when parents and carers come to look around a fantastic school and see if their own children would love it here. And who wouldn't want to come to Oakfield School? Right, Class 5F? Silence. Then Marcus sticks his hand up and says, Sir, sir, I can tell them about how great this school is. That's excellent, Marcus. I'm sure we can all think of lovely things to say about the school. Silence. And I can tell them about the achievement chart and how you can't go on a school trip if you have three sad faces, sir. Marcus says, looking at me. It's actually four sad faces, Marcus. Mr. Fullerman corrects him. I think it should be three, sir, because three sad faces means you haven't been very good at all, and three is my lucky number, Marcus replies. You can't change the rules, Marcus, Amy tells him. Marcus is trying to stop me going on the school trip, but that's not going to happen. Now, Class 5F, listen carefully. Your homework is... I hope it's not going to be hard... I can't get another sad face for getting it wrong, I whisper. I'd like you to draw a poster. A poster all about the things you like. I must be dreaming. My homework is to draw a poster. Yes, this is brilliant. It's the best homework ever. Then Mr. Fullerman says, That reminds me, Tom. I know you like drawing and doodling. Sometimes, sir, I say. Well, the council have created a special doodle wall for kids just like you to draw on. That's amazing, sir, I say. Where is it? The address is on the leaflet. The council wants to encourage children to be creative and draw on this special place where it's allowed so it's not graffiti. Mr Fullerman passes out leaflets showing us where the wall is. Wow, my homework is a poster. And there's an actual doodle wall to draw on too. How good is that? Though Amy doesn't look that happy. Marcus looks the same as usual. I can't wait to go to the doodle wall. How about you? I ask Amy. I'm not bothered. Drawing's not my thing, she tells me. So I say, come on, Amy. Anyone can draw. Even Marcus can doodle. Look, don't ask me what it is though. I point out as Marcus is busy. I think I'll go to the wall after school and draw this. It's good, isn't it? Marcus shows us his drawing. What is it? Amy asks. Isn't it obvious? Marcus sighs. A self-portrait, I say. Very funny, Tom. I'm going to be the first person to draw on the doodle wall. Then everyone will see how good I am, he boasts. What happens if I get there before you? I ask him. You won't, Tom, because you're late for everything, and that's why you've got four sad faces. Actually, I've got three sad faces, I correct him. For now, he adds, smiling. Then Amy says, maybe I will go to the wall after all. I can copy your doodle, doodle style, Tom, if that's okay. Sure, I say, slightly surprised. Marcus covers his work. Don't even think about copying my style. I'll try not to, Amy sighs. Hey Tom, can you do one of your doodles, she wonders. So I write my name and draw around it. Whoa, you're so fast. That's great, Amy says when I finish. Hmm, it's not that good, Marcus grumbles. We ignore him. Why don't we all go to the doodle wall after school to together with Derek? I'm sure one of my parents will drive us, I say confidently. I hope they will. I'm in. Amy tells me, I'm out, but don't worry about me. i am still be at the wall before both of you, Marcus says smugly. No one's worried about you, Marcus. My drawings are amazing, aren't they? Yes, Marcus, you're a genius, I say, sigh. I know, he's not, but sometimes it's just easier to agree. Besides, I've got far more important things to do, like... Going to the doodle wall after school. Telling Derek that we're going to the doodle wall so he can come too. Doing my poster homework early. Impressing mum and dad with my early poster homework so they'll drive us to the school. Getting a good after school snack. That might be at the top of my list, if I'm honest. 
Once I'm home, I get busy with my homework, which seems to be a surprise to Mum. Hi, Tom. You do know you're missing the crazy fruit bunch on TV right now, don't you? Thanks, Mum, but I'm doing my homework early, I say, hoping she'll be super impressed. Wow, well done. I'm impressed. Did I just hear you were doing your homework early, Tom? Dad asks. Yes, I've nearly finished it too. A little hard work never hurt anyone. I can't believe I just said that. But I really want to get to the doodle wall before school. No, before Marcus. It's all down to good parenting, Dad whispers. Mum? Dad? Yes, Tom? As I finish my homework early, and I'm your favourite child, can you take me to the new doodle wall? A doodle wall? Isn't that just graffiti? Dad asks. No, it's official. Mr Fullerman gave us a leaflet. See? Everyone's going after school, I explain. I don't see why not, Tom, Mum says. I can take you in the new car. We have a new car, Mum sounds surprised. Just for a week, it's for the job I'm working on, Dad explains quickly. My friends come too, I ask. Do you mean Derek? Sure, and Amy. And maybe Norman? Why not, Dad agrees. Thanks, Mum and Dad. You're the best parents ever. It always helps to say something along the lines of, please, thank you, and mmm, this broccoli is delicious. We all stop to listen to a strange noise that's coming from outside. I have a feeling that could be your grandparents come for a visit, Mum tells us. Yeah, it's the fossils, I shout, because sometimes they bring treats. Hello, we're here, Grandad cheers, and Granny, and Granny Mavis says, we brought cake. Yum, with onion sprinkles on top, she adds. And a cheeky little cucumber filling. It's so packed with goodness. It's one of your five a day, Granny tells us. Let me cut you a nice big slice. That's okay, Granny. I've already eaten. You have? Um, uh, yes, a bit. But I don't want to get full before dinner and ruin my appetite or my stomach. The fossils like to like very odd combinations of food. I'll save you a piece for later, Tom. Granny tells us, it is, a celebra- is it a celebration cake after all? Ooh, what are we celebrating then? Mum asks. We've got a date for your diary, Grandad says. We decided to get married all over again. Grandma smiles. You, you have? Who to? I ask. To each other, of course. Don't be sure, Bob. I mean, you are getting on a bit, Granny laughs. Ah, your granny's hilarious, and that's why I can't wait to renew our wedding vows. We came by to check you've still got the special Gates family hat. There's a family hat? I ask. Yes, it's a lovely old top hat, Grandad tells me. It's been in the family for years. I wore it on our wedding day, and my father wore it on his wedding day, Grandad explains. That's... That hat is a precious family heirloom, Granny adds. Granny, Granny adds, Er, uh, so exactly how precious is it? I check. Very precious. Oh, that's so exciting. You two are full of surprises, Mum says cheerily. I think that it's in the trunk upstairs. I'll go and get it. We're going to have... Some fun, Tom. I'm even writing a poem to read at the ceremony. Grandad smiles. And I'm making all the food. Granny adds. All of it, Granny. I ask. Yes, don't look so worried, Tom. I'll definitely have lots of your favourite treats. Like caramel wafers. Even better than that, there'll be fish biscuits. It could be worse, I suppose. I might need to brush up on my spoons for the entertainment as well. What do you think? Grandad starts playing a pair of teaspoons like an expert. Better than you playing your teeth, Bob, Granny laughs. Oh, I can do that as well. Don't you dare, Granny warns him. At that exact moment, Delia comes home. Guess what, Delia, I say. What? Your grandparents are renewing their wedding vows and having a great party. 
Isn't that great? Dad tells her. Thrilling, Delia grumbles. Look, I found the hat, Mum says as she comes back. Oh, hello Delia. Have you heard the good news? Can't you tell? Look how happy she is, I joke. And you're here just in time for my next trick, Grandad says and then takes his teeth out. Clackety clack clack clack. Delia's not impressed. Could you all just pretend to be a normal family for once? I've got someone important coming over. Not Avril, I groan. Avril is Delia's friend. No, Delia tells me. Who is so important then, I want to know. No one you know. Is it your boyfriend, I say, as that drives her crazy. Then Mum says, a boyfriend? No. What's the point? No one ever listens to me, Delia grumbles and stomps out of the kitchen. Delia's in a particularly grumpy mood. Though, to be fair, she's not that keen on lots of things like smiling, sunlight, having fun. Bob, put your teeth back in, you can't eat without them, Granny says. Good point, he agrees. Now, who's in for a nice slice of cake? And I won't take no for an answer. Granny's looking at me. Uh Uh-oh, this seems like a good time to head to the doodle wall, as I have to get there before Marcus. Um, maybe later, Granny, I smile, then tell Dad I'm ready to go when he is. Okay, Tom, I won't be long. I've just got to pick up the new car. I'll have some cake later, Mavis. He won't. Tom, keep an eye out for me, Dad says. But what does the car look like? I call after him. Yellow, he says. Well, I'm keeping watch out of the window. Delia walks past. I take the opportunity to have a nice chat. Delia loves it when I ask her questions. Why do you wear sunglasses all the time? So I can block out things that annoy me. Why? Because you're annoying. Why? Why? I know you can hear me. Mum and Dad said I can have a pet. Two pets, actually, with loads of fur and I'm getting a drum kit so I can practice right next to your bedroom. The other day I used your hairbrush on Rooster. It looks lovely and smooth after. You better not have used my hairbrush, Tom. See, I knew you were listening. I did use her hairbrush, but I'm not going to admit that now. Why are you hanging around by the door anyway? Haven't you got something better to do? She wants to know. No, not really. Besides, I'm waiting for Dad to bring the new car round. He's taking me and my friends to the doodle wall. A doodle wall? Delia repeats. Yes, it's a special wall just for doodles. I could draw a big picture of you on it. Don't you dare, or I'll tell Dad that you pinched all his biscuits from the shed. No, I didn't. I did, but not all of them. How long are you going to be standing here for? Why? Don't start on that again. Listen, if the doorbell goes, I'll answer it, not you. I'm expecting someone, okay? Who? I want to know. Never mind, just don't answer the door. Delia stomps off. So I keep looking out for Dad. I wish he'd hurry up. I don't want Marcus to get to the wall before us. Then the bell suddenly goes, ding dong, so I can answer it. Before Delia comes back, of course I do. Hello, hello, can I help you? I say to the bloke who's at the door. Hi, is Delia home? Are you her boyfriend? Because if you are, I think I should share a few interesting facts about her with you. I say helpfully. After all, I'm her little brother, so I know stuff. Oh, actually, I just want to. For instance, when Delia was younger, she had a lot of nits. So I wouldn't go too close to her if I were you. You never know, they could still be there. I scratch a bit to demonstrate how bad it can get. The thing is, also, I interrupt him, Delia likes to pretend that she's really cool, but I know for a fact she loves One Dimension. They're her favourite band ever. You mean One Dimension, the boy band? Yes, she's got posters of them all over her walls, I smile. It's fun to watch the expression on her face. Really? She does. What else do you want to know? Is Delia in a band? He asks. (laughs) Not that I know of. 
I'm the one in the band. We're called dog zombies, but we need to practice more, I say. Yeah, you got to keep practicing if you're in a band, he says. I'm in a band as well, which reminds me, can you give this note to your sister? It's very important she gets it, the bloke tells me. Oh, it's not a love letter, is it? I ask suspiciously. No, it's not. Can you just... He's interrupted by a loud car horn that blasts out. Ta da da, ta da 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 ta da da da. Whoa! Can you see that car? I shout. It's hard not to. He agrees. That's my dad driving. I explain. Hey, what's your band called? He might have heard of it. Dad loves talking about bands. I doubt it. Just give that to Delia, will you? Thanks. He tells me, then disappears fast. Ta da 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 ta da 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 da. Don't say I didn't warn you about Delia. I remind him and go to look at the car when Dad pro- presses the horn again. Da 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 da. It's impressive. Come join the jolly cafe. Who was that, Tom? Dad asks. He didn't say his name, but he's in a band. Anyway, this car's brilliant. Where did you get it from? I ask. Isn't it great? It belongs to a cafe I'm doing some work for. Dad says as Mum comes out for a look. Please tell me that's not our new car, she says. I can tell you are excited, Dad says, which doesn't make Mum laugh. It's not for long. We've only got it for a bit, he adds. Then Delia comes outside and she's even more pleased than Mum. Not. Are you serious? This is so embarrassing. Can you please just go before anyone sees it? Delia tells Dad. It's a bit late for that, Mum says, rolling her eyes. I still think it's fantastic. Then Derek comes running over looking happier than all of us. Tom, Tom, are we going to the doodle wall in that car? He wants to know. Yes, we are, Derek, I say. That's the best car ever, Derek shouts. I think he likes the car. Jump in, boys. We can collect your other friends on the way, Dad tells us. Make sure you go the right way, Frank. You don't want to get stuck under a bridge with a hot dog. Mum tells Dad as we get ready to leave. Good point, Rita. Come on, boys. Have you both got something to draw with? Check, we both say, as Derek's brought a stack of good pens. I've got my poster homework to copy from too. It's a good job I finished it early. This will be super useful. Excellent. Now off we go. Nice and quietly, just blending in, Dad tells us happily. We pick up Norman and Amy on the way. They are almost as impressed with the car as Derek was. Because I don't want Marcus to get to the wall before us. <coughs> Nearly, Dad says, but I'm sure we've been down this road before. I wait another whole minute before asking again. <coughs> I'm just down this road, Dad says, which is a mistake. Mr Gates, Amy shouts and points to a sign. Beware, low bridge. I saw that. Thank you, Amy. He didn't see it. Finally, Dad stops the car. We're here. According to the leaflet, this is the doodle wall. (coughs) We all jump out the car and rush to the wall, which is huge. Where do we start? Norman asks excitedly. Tom, you said you'd show us how to doodle in your style. (coughs) Amy reminds me. I did, and I brought my poster homework to help. I proudly take out my poster homework and show everyone. I like the way you drew those patterns and put sunglasses on a monster. That's funny, Amy laughs. Oh, that's my sister Delia, though she can be quite scary, I explain. It's true, Derek agrees with me. I might draw her on the wall anyway, I say. Your drawings are great, Tom, Amy tells me, which is nice. Mr Fullerman will definitely get rid of one of your sad faces now, Amy carries on saying. And Dad hears her. What sad faces, Tom? He wants to know. Er, it's nothing, Dad, I say quickly. I've got two sad faces, Norman chips in. I've got no sad faces as I'm not in Tom's class, Derek adds. I've got three smiley faces, Amy tells Dad happily. Which doesn't help me much. So, how much sad faces do you have then, Tom? Dad wants to know. I don't think anyone's really counting, Dad, I try to explain. That's not true, 
Tom, remember what Mr. Fullerman told us about sad faces, Amy says. No, I say, hoping we can move on. Then Norman jump, jumps up and does an impression of Mr. Fullerman. I do, he said. Anyone with four sad faces won't be allowed to go on the school trip. <coughs> then Dad asks, is that right, Tom? Yes, but the good news is, because I've done my poster homework early, that's not going to happen. Shall we do some doodling now, I say, and we get going. Doodling on the wall before Marcus is extra fun. Then Derek says, hey, have you noticed we're drawing on Drawing Lane? How weird is that? Amy says. No, it's Drawing Road. <coughs> but this is Drawing Lane, see? Derek says, and he points to the sign. Amy gets out the leaflet to have another look. I'm just going to show this to your dad, she says. I carry on with my doodle and add my name so Marcus can see it when he arrives. I'm taking up a lot of space. As I'm doodling, a lady comes up to me. What's going on here then? She asks. It's the new council doodle wall. It's great, isn't it? <coughs> Who told you it was a doodle wall? The lady wants to know. Our teacher, Mr Fullerman, he said the council set it up for kids to draw on. Oh, really? Yes, it's on the leaflet, I explain. We're the first kids to arrive, which is good news for me. I see. So there'll be more kids turning up as well. Probably. One kid in particular will be really cross that we're here first. The lady takes a photo of the doodles on the wall, then asks, Is there a parent or grown-up with you? Yes, my dad's here. He drove us in that car. You can't miss it, I point out. The one with the hot dog on top, she asks. That's it. OK, stay there, will you? I just need to make a quick phone call. What's your name, by the way? It's Tom. I've got loads more dueling to do, so I'll be here for a while, I say. And the lady goes off and leaves me to it. I particularly like the picture of Delia that I've added. <coughs> I'm so busy drawing, I don't notice that Amy, Derek and Norman have gone. Hey, where is everyone, I wonder, looking around. <coughs> then Dad starts waving his arms at me. Psst, Tom, come over here quickly, we need to go. But I haven't finished my doodle yet, what's the hurry? I ask. Tom, get in the car, come along now. All right, Dad, I'm coming, I tell him, then pick up my pens and go to join them. I don't have a choice, really. Dad told us it was an easy mistake to make and that loads of other kids We'll probably do the exact same thing as we just done. We drew on the wrong wall. You won't be the only ones, I'm sure, says Dad. He keeps saying it to everyone as we drive home. <coughs> just checking no one wrote their names on the wall, did they, Dad asks. I might have done, Amy says. Maybe I did too, Norman adds. I wasn't going to, but then I did, Derek tells us. I just wrote Tom. No one will know it's me, though. I don't think I drew a face. Mr Gates, are we in trouble? Amy asks Dad. No one's in trouble, Amy, he tries to reassure us. Not yet, anyway, Derek whispers. That lady you were talking to, she didn't seem very happy, did she? Norman points out. I didn't notice, I tell Norman, while trying to not make things worse. <coughs> what did she say to you, Tom? Dad asks. Um, she took a photo of the wall. Then told me she was going to make a phone call, I say. And from the way Dad sighs, I think I might have said the wrong thing. A phone call, Dad repeats, to the police! Derek shouts, uh-oh, that doesn't sound good. Don't worry, kids, it wasn't your fault. The council should have made it clearer on the leaflet, Dad tells us. And apart from the lady, I don't think anyone saw us, I said helpfully. It's not like we stand out much in the car, right? Norman adds, not helpfully. After I drop you all home, I promise I'll go back to the doodle wall and sort everything out. Anyone who sees the council leaflet will understand it was an easy mistake to make. It should have been much clearer. Council doodle wall is a drawing road. Right here. Easy to miss, right?
Trying not to worry about the drawing on the wrong wall isn't easy, <coughs> especially as Dad keeps driving past these signs. No drawing on walls. Do not graffiti. That means you. When we get home, Dad's been keen to try and make things better. I promise it will all be fine, Tom. I'll ask. You, I'll talk to your mum so you don't have to, he tells me. Okay, I say, and I don't want Delia to find out either. Dad drives straight back to the wall to sort things out while I go into the house. The first person I bump into is Mum, who asks, Where's your dad gone now? I avoid the question and say, Um, he said he won't be long. Yes, but where's he gone, Tom? She wants to know. I'm trying to not to say anything about drawing on the wrong wall when Delia turns up and starts bothering me as well. <coughs> Dad's better not park that car outside our house. It's so embarrassing. That reminds me, Tom, she begins to say when I blurt out, I don't know where Dad's gone. I'm not asking about that, Delia says. Oh, did you answer the door when I asked you not to? I'm expecting someone important who hasn't turned up yet, she tells me. No, I say really quickly, because it's all coming back to me now, <coughs> and not in a good way. Are you sure, Tom? Delia asks. Then Mum interrupts. Did you hear your dad say how long he was going to be? And I start to get confused. Er, uh, he's not going to be long. Then Delia jumps in. You're hiding something. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I can tell from your face. What about my face? You know crossing your eyes and fingers doesn't work, don't you? And if the wind changes, you'll get stuck like that, Delia tells me. <coughs> my eyes are crossed because I've been doing so much doodling on the doodle wall, I blurt out. I don't know why. How was that, Tom? Did you have a good time? Mum asks. I did. I drew lots of weird monsters and things all over the wall. I look over in Delia's direction just for fun. You better not have drawn me on that wall. You know I'll find out, she says dramatically. Ha, huh, you don't know where the wall is, I laugh. I do, Tom. I've seen the leaflet. The wall's on Drawing Road. That's not the wall we drew on, though, I tell Delia. Then do a small celebration dance. A bit too early. What do you mean, Tom? Where did your dad take you, then? To a wall, a nice big wall. That was... I try to explain until Delia interrupts me. You drew on the wrong wall, didn't you? It was the right wall, just the wrong place, that's all. Nice try, Tom. Thank you, I whisper, hoping Dad will come back soon and sort all this out. Did he take you to Drawing Road? Mum asks. Nearly, I say. When he gets home, I'll ask him exactly where you went, Mum sighs. Nothing's easy in this family. Tell me about it. Delia agrees and starts to head out of the room when Mum tries to stop her. Hang on, while you're both here, I need to talk to you about your grandparents' wedding. Have you both got something to wear? Clothes, I say quietly. Funny, Mum says. You know what I mean, Tom. It would be nice for you both to wear something a little smarter. Try a different look for a change, Mum says. Like smiling, I suggest helpfully. My clothes are fine and I'm not wearing anything fancy. Delia says grumpily. All I'm saying is it's Bob and Mavis' special day and we should all make an extra effort for them. I like the way I look and I'm not changing it for anyone, Delia tells me and stomps off. That's not what I meant at all, Mum sighs. You don't mind wearing something a little smarter, dear Tom? She asks. Exactly how smart, I want to know. At least I found my lovely old vintage dress for the party. I'd forgotten all about it. That's great, Mum, I say. It's gorgeous. Real silk, too. Let me go and get it, Mum says. I'm just glad, glad she stopped talking about me being smart. Mum shows me her dress, which she seems pleased about. I couldn't afford something like this now, she says, swishing the dress around. Isn't it a bit old, I ask, as the sleeves are puffy and odd. It's vintage, Tom. That's a good thing, she laughs, then adds, talking about all things vintage, I'm going to take the cake plate back to your granny's. I won't be long. Okay, 
While I'm going, you could do some more drawing for me to keep yourself busy. Make a con congratulations card for Granny and Grandad, Mum suggests. Yes, good idea, I say. And don't bother looking for any treats. There aren't any. All right, Mum. She always hides the good snacks, but I know where they are. There's nothing here. Aw. Mum shouts like she knows. There's nothing there. Mum shouts like she knows what I'm doing. <coughs> Since I can't find any treats, I might as well start making a card for the fossils. I spread myself out across the whole kitchen table. It's nice having it all for myself for a change. I start doodling some stars, a few hearts, a nice picture of me smiling. I use a thick black magic marker, which looks excellent. There, all done. I'm very impressed with my card. To Granny and Grandad, yeah. Happy being married again. Until I pick it up and notice my doodle has gone through the paper and right onto Mum's new dress. What am I going to do? I've ruined her dress. How am I going to fix it? I'm trying to work out some kind of plan when Mum comes back. I throw myself over her dress and cover it up with as much paper as I can. Then I try and act as relaxed as possible so Mum doesn't suspect a thing. Gulp. Hi, Tom. Hi, Mum. That was quick, I say. I know. Your granny tried to give me more cake to bring back. So I made my excuses to get home, Mum laughs. And I wanted to try my dress on and check it still looks okay. So I'm sure I left it in here somewhere, Mum says. So I say, I haven't seen it and try to stay calm. There it is under the paper, Mum says. And picks her dress up and goes to look in the mirror. No, Mum, don't. I try and stop her. What's wrong, Tom? Your dress looks so old, I blurt out. I don't think it was that bad, Mum says. You should wear something new, Mum. I think we should go shopping, I quickly suggest. You want to go shopping? It's not like you, Tom. Yes, I really do. In fact, I think we should go right now, I say, to stop Mum from to stop Mum from seeing her dress. It's a bit late to go shopping, but we could go tomorrow, Mum says, and then goes to look in the mirror. I do really like this dress, though. I have to leap up and stand in front of the mirror so Mum can't see my doodle. Tom, can you get out of the way? I can't see myself. But I just want to give you a big hug. Oh, that's nice, Mum says, which gives me a chance to think, 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 Think to try and avoid a dress. Doodle. Disaster. Delia's got a new boyfriend and I met him. He came to the house, I say. It's all kind of true. Really? I wonder why she didn't tell me. What's he like, Tom? Mum wants to know. I think he's in a band, I say. A musician, Mum's ask, Mum asks. A drummer. I nod, though I'm not entirely sure that's what he said. It seems to have worked at distracting Mum from looking at her dress, which is good news. Interesting. I might go and have a quick chat with Delia, just to keep the lines of communication open. You get yourself ready for bed, Tom, Mum tells me. OK, I say. Then notice that Mum left her dress behind. Yes! This is my chance to hide it so she can't see the doodle. I've got so many things to remember. 1. Make sure we don't get into trouble for the doodle wall. 2. Fix Mum's dress. 3. Avoid Delia at all times. 4. Don't get any more sad faces at school. It's a lot. I head up to my bedroom and after a quick look around, I decide to put Mum's dress in my wash basket. For now. Then I get my poster homework that I did early and put it next to my pillow so it will be the first thing I see when I wake up. Next, I spot the envelope that the bloke gave me for Delia. I can't give it to her now, or she'll know I answered the door. I'll sneak it into her room later, when she's not there. I've been very busy. No wonder I'm tired. Beep, 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 huh? Somehow, I've managed to oversleep, and now I'm going to be late for school. I can't get another sad face, so I brush my teeth in a rush, get dressed and eat breakfast, and then I meet Derek as quick as I can. 
We do fast walking all the way to school and we get there just in time for the bell. Mr Fullerman hasn't started register yet. We're not late. Hooray! I tell Derek and run into class. Marcus is already there. Late again, Tom, he smiles. Not quite, I say, and sit down. Guess what, he says. What, I ask. I was the first person at the doodle wall and did the best drawing ever. Where are you lot, Marcus asks. We didn't go, Marcus. I was too busy doing my poster homework, I tell him. Then Amy whispers to me, Did your dad saw everything out of the doodle wall? But Marcus hears. I thought you said you, did, you didn't go to the doodle wall. We sort of went, I tell him. So did you go or didn't you? Marcus asks us both. We did. We didn't. Make your mind up then. We did go, Amy says. Only we ended up drawing on the wrong wall. But it's okay, as Tom's dad sorted everything out. None of us are in trouble, are we, Tom? No, it wasn't your fault, I explain. Sounds like it was your fault to me. Looks like you both might be getting one of these now. Marcus has drawn a sad face. I don't think so, Marcus, Amy tells him. Then turns to me. It was fun doodling on the wall yesterday. Thanks for letting me copy your poster homework, she says. You copied Tom's homework, Marcus butts in. No, I did my own style. No, I did my own. We just doodled on the wall in Tom's style, Amy tells him. You doodle on the wrong wall in Tom's style. Sounds like you get you'll be getting even more sad faces if Mr Fullerman finds out. No one's going to be in trouble, Marcus, I say, just before Mr Fullerman makes an announcement. Morning class five F. Can everyone take their poster homework, please? I'm really looking forward to seeing them, he tells us. I feel great about this as I've done my poster homework. I go to take it out and that's when I realise it's not there. Where is it? Oh no, I keep looking, but I've left our home. Not again, Tom, Amy whispers. What are you going to do? I don't know, I sigh. I do, Marcus butts in again. It's four sad faces for you. And we all know what four sad faces means. No school trip. This can't be happening. Why do I always forget things? Groan. Mr Fullerman comes over and tells the class, Hold your poster homework up so I can collect it, please. Then Amy slides her homework over to me. Take it, she whispers. What? I say, and I'm not sure what she's doing. But, but before I can ask, Mr Fullerman is standing behind me. And he picks it up. Thank you, Tom. I know you were looking forward to do this homework for a change. He tells me, then starts to read it. Uh-oh. Tom? Yes, sir, I say. You know this homework is supposed to be all about you and the things you like doing? Yes, sir. So looking at your poster homework, it says your favourite subject is... Maths? Does it? Well, that's true. Maths is one of my favourite subjects, sir. I just don't talk about it much, I explain. And spelling too. Who doesn't like spelling, sir? I smile. You don't, Marcus points out when he really doesn't have to. Are you, and you have a passion for gymnastics? I do. It's the best, I say doing a pose. I'm learning all kinds of interesting things about you today, Tom, Mr Fullerman says. Then Marcus starts waving his homework around and pointing at me. Sir, sir, sir. Hold on, Marcus. All I can say, Tom, is that's a good job you did have your homework, or I'd have given you another sad face. Right, Amy, can I see your homework, please? Uh, I'm sorry, sir, I forgot it. Amy just about manages to say the words. I'll bring it in tomorrow, she adds. This sends Marcus into a frenzy of waving. Mr Fullerman, Mr Fullerman, one minute, Marcus. Oh dear, Amy, that's not like you. I will have to take away one of your smiley faces. It has to be the same for everyone, Mr Fullerman explains. I know, sir, Amy sighs. I've never lost a smiley face before, she says sadly. Now I feel bad. But Marcus can hardly contain himself. Sir! Sir! he shouts. That's Amy's homework, sir. 
I saw her pass it to Tom. Seriously, Marcus, can you just keep quiet, Amy tells him. Right, exactly whose homework is this then? Mr. Fullerman asks. Tom's, Amy's, Amy's. Is this your homework, Tom? No, sir, it's Amy's homework, I tell him. Yes, I knew I was right. No one ever listens to me, Marcus jumps up. Everyone listens to you, Marcus, I say. It's hard not to. Mr. Fullerman has heard enough. This has taken up far too much of our class time already, so here's what's going to happen. Amy, no more swapping homework and you'll lose one smiley face. Tom, bring in your poster homework tomorrow. Until you do, you'll have another sad face. Right, do you both understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ha, ha, ha. Marcus is a twit. Amy turns to me and whispers, You could just have said it was your homework, Tom. I know, I'm sorry, Amy. I didn't mean to get you into trouble, I tell her. I can't believe I've lost a smiley face, she says. I know how you feel, I say sympathetically. I don't, Marcus adds, not helping. I don't think today can get any worse. Mr Fullerman gathers up everybody's poster homework, apart from mine and then makes an announcement to the whole class. Would everyone like to hear more about the school trip? The school trip you won't be go coming on, Tom, with your four sad faces, Marcus whispers. I'm going to, you'll see, I tell him, then imagine different ways to stop Marcus from going instead. Normally, on a school trip, we go somewhere like a museum. This time we'll be... Going, we'll be visiting, probably a museum, somewhere very special, definitely a museum, that we've never been to before, a different museum, and you're all going to love it, a small museum. A biscuit factory, a what? Did Mr Fullerman just say what I thought he said? I ask Amy. He did, Tom. Marcus starts singing a song to celebrate. I'm going to an F-A-C-T-O-R-Y, a biscuit factory. Do you have to keep singing, Marcus? I ask. I think I do. I'm going to go to a factory, a biscuit factory. I love a biscuit. Marcus is so annoying. I just have to go on the school trip now. I'm going to make sure that I do these things and then everything is going to be fine. One, make sure Derek and Amy and Norman don't get into trouble for the doodle wall. Two, fix Mum's dress somehow. Three, avoid Dealey at all times. Four, don't get any more sad faces. Five, bring my poster homework to get rid of one of my sad faces and go on the school trip. Mrs Mumble interrupts with a very crackly announcement that's hard to understand. Quiet, please. Let's hear what Mrs Mumble is trying to tell us. Hello, Oakfield School. I'd like to make an announcement about the new school council. What do do one? Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good. I'm not panicking yet, though. It's come to our attention that some children have been drawing on the wrong wall. I repeat, the wrong wall. The correct wall is in Drawing Road. That's Drawing Road and not Drawing Lane. Please read the council leaflet carefully before you doodle. Thank you. Now I'm panicking. Oh, Tom and Amy. That sounds like you all could be in trouble. That's one sad face for Amy and ten for you, Tom. Marcus is Joy's telling us. Marcus, that's not going to happen, Amy snaps. That's a first for everything. Marcus smiles. Ignore him, Amy. It wasn't your fault. We'll all be fine if Dad sorts it out. At the bell goes for break time, which is a relief. Mr Fullerman says, Tom, Norman, Mr Keane wants to see both of you in his office. Really, sir? I ask. Yes, off you go, Mr Fullerman tells us. Norman and I are in no hurry. Derek is already waiting outside. Did you hear Mrs Mumble's announcement? Do you think we're in trouble, he asks. Maybe, I sigh. We could pretend not to know anything about it, Norman suggests, and say someone else signed our names on the wall. 
De Derek says, Did you write your name on the wall? Norman asks me. Maybe a little, I sigh. Hey, I've got an idea. How about I create a distraction by jumping around, a lot like this, Norman says, then demonstrates for both of us. I'm not sure that's going to work, Norman, I tell him. You jump really fast, though. Thanks, Norman stops when Mr Keane opens the door and calls us in. Come in, you three. I need to speak to you urgently. We follow Mr Keane into his office. Have you got any ideas what, why you're here? He asks us. Not really, sir, I say. I've heard that you've all been up to something, he tells us. Have we, sir? I don't think so, sir, Derek says. Whatever it was, it wasn't us, sir, Norman shouts. Well, that's not what I've been hearing. I want to know if it's you three. Gulp. Are still in a band. Yeah, yes, sir, we are. That's great, new that's great. news, boys. Have you been practising? A little bit, sir, Derek tells him. In between snap breaks, Norman says. We do practice, though, sir, I add. In that case, how do you feel about playing a song at the open day assembly? Something to impress the new parents and all the other important guests coming that day. We'll do it, sir, we all shout. Dog zombies rule! I'm glad you're so enthusiastic. You'd be doing the school a huge favour too. The recycled orchestra were all set to play until their instruments got mistaken for a pile of rubbish and were accidentally recycled. That's terrible, sir. But lucky for us, I say, and try not to sound too pleased. It's an important day for the school, so don't let me down, dog zombies. We won't, sir, Norman shouts as we leave his office. Phew, I thought he was going to ask about the doodle wall. Now, all dog zombies have to do is play brilliantly at the open day assembly. I'll get rid of all my sad faces and then I can go on the school trip, I tell Derek and Norman. Well, that's the plan anyway. We should have band practice at mine after school, as there's not much time. We'll have to concentrate really hard on the most important thing. Like what band snacks to have, says Derek. Exactly, Norman agrees. Back at home, I go and see who's around and find Dad in his shed. So I tell him the good news. Guess what, Dad? Mr Keane wants dog zombies to play at the school open day. Well done, Tom. That's great. We thought you wanted to tell us about the doodle wall, but you fixed it, haven't you? I asked Dad, just checking. Not exactly, Tom. I was on my way back to the wall. When the car broke down, and by the time I got there, it was dark, and there was no one around to talk to, Dad explains. But I'll go back later and find the lady and sort everything out. Don't worry about a thing, Tom, he tells me, just as Mum pops her head around the door. Don't worry about what, she asks. Nothing, we both say. Mum still doesn't know about the doodle or mix-up. Really? Come on, I've, I can tell something's up. It's just the car broke down, but it's fixed now. And dog zombies are playing at the open day. Fantastic. But make sure you bring in your homework tomorrow, Tom. You left it behind. I know. I won't forget it this time. Derek and Norman are coming round for a practice later. Dad's supplying the biscuits. Am I? Thanks, Dad. Then Mum asks us both a question. I don't suppose that either of you have seen my vintage dress. It's completely disappeared. No, I don't know where it is, I say a bit too quickly. It'll turn up. Things always do, Dad tries to reassure her. Well, if it doesn't, we'll have to go shopping after all, Tom, Mum tells me. Yeah, shopping. I love shopping, I say, pretending to be keen. Might distract Mum from the missing dress. Because I know it's in the wash basket in my room. OK, Tom. Hopefully, Mum starts to say when the doorbell goes. Derek and Norman are here for band practice. Better go, I say, then pinch a packet of Dad's biscuits on the way out of the shed. Norman and Derek are keen to get started. Derek helps himself to a pair of shades I have in my room. Are these your sisters? He asks. Yeah, but it's OK. She has loads more. She won't miss them. I tell Derek. Then count him in the band for a warm-up. After four, 
One, two, three, four. Having a good rock star pose is an important part of being in a band, especially if you don't have many songs. Norman spots a copy of Rock Weekly and holds it up to next to Derek's face. Hey Derek, you look like that guy, like Slash from Guns N' Roses. And holds it up to Derek's face. Hey Derek, you look like Slash from Guns N' Roses. Without the hat, Norman says. Not for long, I say, and go and find Derek's top hat. Go and find Grandad's top hat, which Derek is keen to try on. How do I look? Derek wants to know. Like Willy Wonka, Norman laughs. It's true. We all have to a go at wearing it. Then try to get back to our band practice after Norman asks me a question. Hey, Tom, did your dad sort everything out at the doodle wall last night? Um, kind of. Don't worry, though. It'll all be fine. But right now, we need to keep focused and not waste any more time. So let's make this very important decision, I tell Derek and Norman. Cheesy puffs or biscuits? Both, Norman says, which works for me. While we're sharing out the snacks, Delia knocks at my door. Tom, I need to talk to you, she shouts. Pretend we're not here, she'll go away, I say. I know you're there. I'm coming in. Delia is not going away. I tell Derek to take off the hat so she doesn't see he's been wearing it and I throw it onto my bed just as Delia barges in and shouts, Tom, have you got something for me? Mum said you came round and you spoke to them. I say nothing and offer her a cheesy puff instead, which isn't what she wanted to hear. Gulp, I don't want a cheesy puff, Tom. Biscuit, Tom, who did you talk to? Your boyfriend. We had a really nice chat. I don't have a boyfriend. What did you say to him? Um, let me think. Tell me. Oh, yes. He was surprised to hear that One Dimension is your favourite band. Are you kidding me? You said One Dimension was my favourite band, Tom. That was years ago. Thanks a lot, Tom. No wonder I didn't hear anything back yet. And stop going into my room and taking my sunglasses. I sit on my bed to keep out of Delia's way. Are you sure you don't want a biscuit? Delia storms over to Derek. He hands them over quickly and she storms out of my room and slams the door. She does like one dimension. Really, I say. They're not the worst band in the world, Norman agrees. Derek looks worried. Don't worry, Delia's always grumpy, I tell him. It's not Delia, it's you. I think you sat on the top hat, he says. Oh, I have. Oh no, what am I going to do? That looks really bad, Derek tells me. It's properly squashed, Norman adds. When's the wedding, Tom? Derek checks. Maybe you can get a new one before then. I can't get a new one. This hat's been in my family for years and years. You could say Rooster tried to eat it, Derek suggests. Rooster doesn't eat everything, I say. Or you could say a massive pigeon flew down to take the hat and attacked it like this. We watch Norman act out the whole scene. It's pretty impressive. Okay, maybe not. So, what are you going to do, Tom? Norman asks me. It's a good question. When something like this happens, there's only one thing you can do, I say. Tell your mum and dad, Derek asks. No, hide it, of course. I put the squashed hat inside my wash basket, along with mum's dress. There, all done. We finally get on and practice a few songs for the school open day. So we are all ready to play really well. I add Grandad's squash top hat to the list of things that I have to sort out. Clean mum's dress. Fix Grandad's top hat, make sure my friends don't get into trouble about the doodle wall, and avoid Delia. Unless I can find that envelope and slip it into her room like I had nothing to do with it. Don't get any more sad faces at school. Remember to bring in my poster homework and go on the school trip to the biscuit factory. That is a lot of things to remember, but it's okay because we've had an excellent band practice and I'm going to bed early, so I am going to be bright and sparky for tomorrow. I've also found a spare wafer, which is always a treat. And of course, I brush my teeth. Tom, 
You're late. Hurry up. Oh no, what time? I can't be late today. <clears throat> I need to be super speedy. <clears throat> I don't want another sad face. I get dressed fast and run out my bedroom picking up everything I need. Pens, paper, water bottle. Phew, I almost forgot my homework, but I didn't. I shove it safely into my bag right next to my water bottle so I know where it is. I grab breakfast, then run all the way to school. Devk and Norman are already there. So is Mr Keane, who looks pleased to see us. Morning, boys. Are you all ready to play at the assembly this morning? <coughs> he asks. Yes, sir. Then Norman takes out his drumsticks. I've been practising my twirling, he tells Mr Keane, and nearly spins them out of his hands. Mr Keane steps back to safe distance. Excellent. Let's show the new parents what a great school Dog Zombie Oakfield is. Don't let me down, Dog Zombies. Yes, sir, we all say. Mr King goes off to talk to the people arriving. Then Derek suddenly gasps. What's wrong? I ask. Whatever you do, don't turn around, he says. So we all turn around. Oh, no. It's the lady from the wall, I say. What's she doing here? Derek wonders. We all do. She's talking to Mr Keane. What if she tells him we drew on her wall? Norman asks. She looks a bit cross, Derek tells us. Let's get to class then before she sees us, I suggest. But Derek wants to hear their conversation. He leans back and casually listens. Welcome to our wonderful open day, Mr Keane says. It's lovely to be invited, she replies. We've got a very impressive morning ahead, including a wonderful school band who'll be playing for us. Uh-oh, that's us. Time to go, Derek says, and we head off quickly. They're keen to get to class, I think. Let's join the others and I'll show you around. You're in for a treat today. I'm really looking forward to it. Oakfield School Open Day. We'll manage, we managed to get to class without the lady seeing us. Tom, please tell me your dad sorted everything out at the you-know-what wall. It's the first thing Amy wants to know when I sit down. Everything's going to be fine. Although the lady from the wall's here at the school. I say, she's here. Yes, but she hasn't seen us. Don't worry. I'm not worried about anything, Marcus says. I don't have four sad faces, which means I'm going to an F-A-C-T-O-R-Y. A biscuit factory to sing marcus i sigh i can't help myself i'm just really annoying i say no excited excited about seeing all the biscuits being made it's going to be amazing <coughs> don't worry tom i'll tell you all about it as you're not going marcus tells me i am going maybe not marcus says hey tom amy says changing the subject a yo uh, dog zombies playing at the school assembly? Yes, the plan is will be so good that Mr. Fullerman takes back all my sad faces and will have let go to the biscuit factory then. I am being positive. You'd better be good. You've got a lot of sad faces to get rid of, Marcus says. We are good and we're playing one of our best songs too. Is it as good as my song? You know, the one that goes i'm going to an f-a-c-t-o-r-y a biscuit factory mr fullerman comes in and sees to seems to be in a good mood this morning morning class 5f i hope you're all ready for the open day and tom have you got your poster homework with you i have mr fullerman it's in my bag i'll just get it i have left a nice space on the wall to pin it up it's in here somewhere sir I'm looking in my bag and I suddenly find my homework. Oh no, sir, my water bottle must have leaked. I've heard that one I've heard that one before, Marcus laughs. Oh dear Tom, that's not going to impress anyone, is it? No, sir. I can see you've at least tried to do your homework. So I'll give you one more chance. Go to the library at break time and do it again, okay? Marcus keeps singing in my ear. I'm going to an F-A-C-T-O-R-Y, a biscuit factory. I'll do it, sir, I reassure him. <coughs> I don't have a choice. I'll redo my homework, play amazingly well in dog zombies, avoid the lady from the wall, and everything will work out fine. 
Tom, Tom, Amy says and starts shoving me. Look who's just walked into our class. It's the lady from the wall. Oh no. We use our books to hide our faces. I hope Norman hides as well. He does. Hello, Class 5F. We're just having a look round the school and I thought I'd show you our guests. Some of the work you've been doing. Then Mr Keen tells the lady, Mr Fullerman has been running a class achievement chart. That looks interesting, she says. It helps encourage the children to do their best, Mr Keen explains. Some people are doing better than others, Marcus mutters to me. Keep the books up and don't move, Amy tells me. They'll be gone soon. We just need to keep quiet and not attract any attention at all. I agree with Amy. May, may I ask a question? The lady asks. What do the children have to do to get on the achievement chart? Who'd like to answer that question? Mr Keane asks the class. Marcus is desperate to answer. Sir! Sir! I will! I will! Go ahead, Marcus, Mr Fullerman says. You get a sad face for doing something wrong, like being late or getting your homework again. Thank you, Marcus. And when you get four sad faces, you won't be allowed on the school trip. Thank you, Marcus. And you get a smiley face when you do something right. But that hasn't happened for some people. As you can see, Marcus keeps looking at me. I keep hiding behind my book. Mr Keane interrupts Marcus. We do like to encourage children to take part in all kinds of activities. We'll be having a very special band in and assembly later won't we, Mr Fullerman? You will, Mr Keane. Tom, Norman, raise your hands. I stay hidden and wave. We just get a bit nervous before we go on, I try to explain. Excellent. We'll look forward to it. Thank you, Mr Fullerman. We're off to the school kitchens next where everything is freshly prepared. We encourage healthy eating at Oakfield School. You won't find fatty or fried foods here. Do the kids ever feel like they're missing out at all? The lady asks. Not at all. It's something we're very proud of. You won't see chips on the menu at Oakfield School. That's for sure, Mr Keane says and laughs. We breathe a sigh of relief when they go. Finally, I say to Amy, who points out something I hadn't thought of. So Tom, your band is playing in front of everyone and the lady will be there. How are you going to hide then? I'll think of something, I say. I don't know what, though. As I walk to the hall, I have a bit more time to think. Mr Fullerman says Norman and I can get ready to play for the open day, so we meet Derek behind the school stage. Thanks to caretaker Stan, everything is set up and ready to go, but we still have a big problem to solve. Do you think she's told Mr Keane anything? Derek asks. No, I don't think so, I say. Norman and I hid when she came into class. But she'll see us on stage, I say. I have a sneaky peek from behind the curtain and the lady is sitting in the front row. Oh no. I've got an idea, Norman says. We could all keep moving really quickly and create a blur. Then Norman demonstrates. I don't think that's going to work, Norman, Derek tells him. No, it won't, but... Maybe something else will, I say, and point to the dressing up basket and costumes hanging in the corner. Let's have a look then, Derek says. So we do. Mr Keane begins the school assembly as we get ready to play. A warm welcome to this very special open day assembly. Here at Oakfield School, we're very proud of all the children and their achievements. I'd like to congratulate the school football team. 11th out of 12th is one better than last year. And we all know it's the taking part that counts, although a trophy would be nice. And can we take a moment to admire the marvellous artwork that's been inspired by our school campaign on healthy eating. We encourage every pupil to make good choices and cut out junk food. Now it's time to introduce a band who will be playing one of their all-time favourite songs, I've been told. Please give a big Oakfield School warm welcome to the one and only Dog Zombies. Hello Oakfield School, we're Dog Zombies 
and we've written this song about school dinners. It's called The School Dinner Blues. We hope you'll join in and sing along with us. I think our disguises are working. Close your eyes and um, while licking your lips that today's the day we'll be serving up chips. What do we want? We want chips. When do we want them? Now. Chips. What do we want? We want chips. When do we want them? Now. Chips, 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 chips. No, no, no. We're in full float when the sound goes off and the curtains come down. So we're forced to stop. Ahem, there seems to be a slight technical problem and we've had to cut them short. I'd just like to point out that Oakfield School serves very healthy lunches every day. No chips, ever. I'm happy to take off the beard. It was becoming scratchy. The next day, there's some good news and there's some bad news. The good news is that we did excellent beard disguises. The lady from the wall didn't recognise us. Mr Keane wasn't happy about our choice of song and was confused about the beards. But luckily, everyone else who heard our song loved it, so we didn't get into trouble for that. I re even remember my poster homework too. Mr Fullerman said, well done Tom, and took back one of my sad faces. Yes, but the bad news is I still can't go on the school trip. Here's what happened. I was in the library doing my homework when Mr Keane brought the lady from the wall round. I dived under the table and bumped right into Buster Jones, who was avoiding his detention. He made me promise not to tell anyone where he was, and then said, Go on, Gatesy, draw me a funny picture. I couldn't say no to Buster Jones, so I drew a doodle I knew would make him laugh. Mr Fullerbum. Buster thought it was hilarious. But I'd only gone and done it on the back of my poster homework. I didn't realise that until I handed it in to Mr Fullerman. He didn't think it was funny at all. He gave me back my sad face. You're running out of chances, Tom. Mr Fullerman told me sternly, so no school for trip for me, yet. And there's more bad news. Grandad's hat is still squashed. I can't find the envelope. That bloke gave me for Delia, who'll even be more furious if she fans out. So I'm avoiding her big time. My doodles are also still over Mum's vintage dress. And now Mum wants to go shopping because she can't find it anywhere. I really don't want to go shopping. But I overheard Delia on the phone telling Avril in a really grumpy voice. No, nothing. Although I can tell Tom knows something. I'm going to find him and ask him again. I knew I had to act fast, so even though shopping was the last thing I wanted to do, I found myself saying to Mum, Yes, please, I would love to come. Here I am, shopping. Tom, what about this suit? I like the colour. It's a generous sh It's a gorgeous shade of green. Don't you think? Mum asks me. If you want to look like a Brussels sprout, I mumble. Look. I've got a cute little waistcoat as well, she points out, as if that will make me change my mind. Do you want to try it on? Mum smiles. Not really, I sigh. OK, we'll keep looking. I'm glad I found a nice dress for the wedding, just in case my vintage dress doesn't turn up. I wish I knew where it disappeared to. It's a real mystery, Mum says. I picked out something that I liked and held it up. What about this t-shirt? It's perfect, I try and convince Mum. Rock and roll rules. You're going to a wedding, not a concert, Tom. Let's find something a little more special, Mum tells me, and picks out another suit that's even worse than the first one. Mum, I'm not wearing a suit, I say, and I'm just about to look for something else when I suddenly spot the lady from the wall, and she's only walking towards me. What's she doing here? This is a disaster. Mum and loads of other random... I grab the suit from Mum and loads of other random clothes too, then shout, I've changed my mind, I love it, I want to try everything on right now. Here I go. OK, Tom, I'll wait outside the changing room for you. Well done. I disappear as quickly as I can, and just in time, as the lady is only right outside when she starts talking to Mum. 
Do you mind asking where you found that dress? I hear her say. What am I going to do now? On that rail behind you, it's lovely, isn't it? That's just what I'm looking for, thank you. The lady tells Mum. Phew, she's going to leave and everything will be fine. I think I'll try it on, the lady adds. My son's in the changing room, but he won't be too long. Tom, are you ready? Hurry up. Oh no, I can't let her see me. I put on all the clothes at the same time and hope for the best as I emerge from the changing room slowly. What are you wearing, Tom? It's a wedding, not a fancy dress party, Mum tells me as I try to hide my face. <coughs> so far, the lady doesn't seem to recognise me. Where's the suit, Tom? Mum asks. Underneath, I mumble. Come on, let me see it. Then she tries to take off my coat while apologising to the lady, who asks, Do you mind if I tried the dress on now? Go ahead, I'm not sure what's going on here. Mum looks at me and shakes her head. I keep quiet. Mum takes off the big coat to see the suit. Oh, that looks great, Tom, but maybe without the hat, I can't waste any time. So I say, let's buy it. Now, I love the suit, we can pay over there. I'm trying to leave the shop before the lady comes out of the changing room. You need to change back into your own clothes first, Mum tells me. No, I don't, Mum, please. Can I wear it? the suit right now? It's the best, and I don't want to take it off. All right, Tom, but don't get it dirty. I'll get you clothes. Hang on, just wait. A quick photo. <coughs> you look so... Mum, do you have to? You look so smart, though, she tells me. I don't make a fuss. Instead, I run to the counter to avoid the lady, and Mum follows me. Isn't that your friend Marcus waving at you? She asks. Why did it have to be Marcus? Aren't you going to wave back? I give him a, sw a small wave because I know Marcus will be extra annoying in school tomorrow. Then Mum pays for the suit and we make it out of the shop before the lady sees me. Phew. Mum keeps taking sneaky pictures of me all the way home. I'll send them to your grandparents, she tells me. Like that makes it better. Someone else that I don't want to bump into when I get back to the house is Delia. She'll just laugh at me and start asking more questions. I almost make it up to my room when I see Dad. Tom, nice suit. Thanks, Dad. Did you sort everything out at the doodle wall? I want to know. Not yet, Tom. But still, don't worry about a thing, he tells me. Mum overhears us talking. Who's worried about what? Nothing, I shout a bit too loudly. Tom. Don't get the suit dirty, you need to take it off, remember, she tells me, which reminds me, where's your washing? I've got some to do as well, so I'll grab Tom's, Dad says, and start. And I start to panic, as I remember what's in the wash basket. Don't go in my room, I yell. All right, Tom, Dad says, I've just got a surprise for you, and I don't want you to see it. I'll bring my own washing down, I tell them both, and smile. Fine, Tom, but take the suit off, will you? Mum reminds me again. As I'm about to disappear into my room, Dad asks, I don't suppose you've seen Grandad's top hat, have you, Tom? Is that missing too? I still can't find my vintage dress, Mum adds. I try and act as normal as possible and say, I don't know where anything is, then escape to my room. What am I going to do? If Mum and Dad see I've got the hat and the dress, I'll be in trouble and they might not let me go on the school trip. Don't forget to bring your washing down. Dad shouts through the door, which gives me an idea. Why didn't I think of it before? I'll put the dress in the washing machine. I mean, how hard can it be to wash a dress? I'll put the hat under my bed for now. Sneaking down to the washing machine is the easy bit. Trying to work out what to do next isn't so simple. There's a lot of different washing stuff to use. I shove in Mum's dress. Then add a bit of everything, some powder, two of these, maybe a bit of this, another one of those. That should get the doodles out of Mum's dress. One more for luck. All I have to do is turn the machine on. I'm deciding which buttons to press when I can hear someone walking down the corridor. So I hide just in time. It's Delia. She piles her own clothes into the machine, adds more powder and turns it on. 
which is a result, as Delia's done it all for me. This is excellent. I wait until she leaves, then sneak back into my room, take off the suit, then go down to the front room and lie on the sofa for a nice, relaxing time. I'm busy reading a comic when the fossils co- when the fossils come over to say hello. We were just passing through. We wanted to check the top hat still fits. Grandad announced. Do you think you could get it for me, Tom? Uh oh! I jump up. I can't, Grandad. Why is that, Tom? Granny wonders. Because it's not here. It's it's being washed for the wedding. Washed? Grandad repeats. Yes, washed, cleaned. That's a good idea. You want to look your best, don't you, Bob? Granny asks him. I suppose everyone will be looking at me, Grandad says, and Granny gives him a look. I'm hoping they won't ask any more questions about his top hat. All we want for everyone is to have a fun and relaxed day, Granny tells me. But not so relaxed that Teacup Tony falls asleep, Grandad laughs. Are Teacup Tony and the saucers playing at the wedding? I ask. I hope so, but Teacup Tony might need a little power nap to keep him going, Granny tells us. He might not be the only one, Grandad winks at Granny. You'll be fine, Bob, Granny tells him. I wasn't talking about me, he jokes. Very funny, Bob. The party's at the leafy green old folks' home, so I hope it's not going to be ruined. Mum storms in and shouts, look, Delia put my silk dress into the washing machine with all her black clothes. Oh no, that's terrible. What was she thinking, I say. I bet she just threw it in without even reading the washing label, Mum tells us. Yes, that's exactly what she did, I nod. It's all grey and ripped, Mum sighs. A bit like me, Grandad jokes. Mum ignores him. (coughs) Oh, that's such a shame, Rita. I'm sure Delia didn't mean to ruin your dress. Is Delia going to get into trouble, I ask. (coughs) I don't know, Tom. I'll have to ask her what happened. How can I wear this now? Mum says. Oh, I don't know, Rita. There's a little touch of shabby chic about it. Don't you think? Granny tells Mum. But she's not convinced. It's more shabby than chic, Mavis. It'd be fine if you were having a Halloween party and not a wedding. You could always wear the new dress you bought, I suggest. Can I just check? It's still Delia's fault, right? I'm going to have to wear the new dress now. It's just my vintage dress is sorry. It was was just a timeless classic. Sounds just like me, Grandad grins. Not helping, Bob, Granny tells him. (coughs) I'll think I'll go and have a chat with Delia. Found out if she did this. What else is going on in her life, Mum tells us and goes off to find her. I keep quiet. Then, Granny tries to lighten the mood and says, Well, the lovely thing about weddings is that they always bring everyone together. I'm so looking forward to us all being one big happy family, Granny says, just as Delia shouts from her room. Are you serious? No, it wasn't me who put your dress in the machine. Well, that went well, Mum says when she comes back. And that's why we we should really get a dog, I suggest. Nice try, Tom. It was worth a go. Maybe your dad can talk to her, though. I don't know where he's gone. Did he tell you where he was going, Tom? Mum asks me. Um, not really, I say. Better go and do my homework, I add, as an excuse to get back to my room. <coughs> I really hope Dad is at the wall and sorting everything out. So I'll be able to go into school tomorrow and tell my friends that everything is fine. Meanwhile, at the wall, I can explain, officer. It was my son. I'm painting over his doodles. Really, sir? Blaming it on your own son. You can come to the station and answer a few questions. But I can't. Oh, yes, you can, sir. Dad's in trouble. Next day in school. I make a special effort to be on time as I don't want any more sad faces. As soon as I sit down, Marcus says, I saw you the other day, Tom. Did you, Marcus? That must have been exciting for you. Not really. You were wearing a funny suit. It wasn't that funny, I say. It was, he insists. What's wrong with wearing a suit, Amy asks Marcus. You didn't see the colour of it, Marcus laughs. Shall we talk about something else, I say, trying to change the subject. 
OK, let's count how many sad faces we've all got on the achievement chart then. I've got one, and look, you still have four, Tom, Marcus says. You don't have to rub it in, Marcus. I've, I'm just counting them, that's all. Amy still hasn't got any, have you, Amy? No, Marcus. Then Amy turns to me. Don't worry, Tom. I managed to get my smiley face back, she says. How did you do that? I ask. I did my poetry homework early. Poetry homework? What poetry homework? Not again, Tom. You'll never be able to come on the school trip if you keep forgetting things all the time. Amy shakes her head. It's not looking good for the biscuit factory now, is it, Tom? Marcus says. How did I miss the poetry homework? What was I doing? Morning class 5F. I'm really looking forward to hearing your poems and I've got more news on the school trip to the biscuit factory, so listen carefully. You don't have to listen, Tom, Marcus tells me smugly. I am still going, I say. We'll see, Marcus adds. If you're coming on the school trip, I need your signed permission slips back by tomorrow at the very latest and everyone who's not joining us, that'll be you. Marcus whispers, I ignore him, we'll be spending some quality time with Mrs Worthington for a double maths class instead. Well, I know where I'd rather be, Marcus smiles. Marcus, as you seem to be interested in sad faces, would you like me to add one to your chart? No, sir. Right then, it's time to hear your homework. Tom, would you like to go first? It's never too late to gain back a smiley face. Mr Fullerman is trying to be nice, but I don't have any poetry homework, so I stall for time. One minute, sir, it's just in my bag. I have a good rummage around and find the envelope that bloke gave me for Delia, which is not what I want right now. Is that it, Tom? No, sir, I'm still looking, I say quickly. Then I spot a caramel wafer wrapper in the corner of my bag, and that gives me an idea. You do have a poem, don't you, Tom? I've done mine, sir, Marcus shouts. I've already got it, but I need Norman to come and help me. Norman looks confused. What, me? He checks. Yes, remember the song we practised the other day? It's sort of a poem. I explain, and we have a quick practice first. Ready, sir? This is called the Biscuit Song. The class starts laughing. Settle down, class 5F. Ready when you are, boys. We haven't got all day, Mr. Fullerman says. They're making it up. I can tell, Marcus says. Stop being a twit, Marcus. Amy shuts him up. And we're about to start. It's about our favourite biscuits and not about fig rolls. Nobody liked those, I announce. I quite like them, but let's get on with the song, shall we? Mr. Fullerman tells us. So we do. The biscuit song. Biscuits here, biscuits there. Eat a biscuit anywhere. Crunchy biscuits, custard creams, biscuits in your biscuit dreams. Shortbread biscuits, ginger nuts, jammy biscuits to pick you up. Chocolate cookies, chocolate chips, melted chocolate on your lips. Say yeah, yeah. Move your biscuit feet. Say yeah, yeah. To the biscuit beat. Say yeah, yeah. It's a biscuit treat. Biscuit, biscuit plain and biscuit sweet. Well done, you two. That was very impressive. You both did brilliantly. So, Norman, that's one smiley face for you. And, Tom, I'll take one sad face away and give you a smiley face. Does that mean I can come on the school trip after all, sir? I ask. <coughs> it does, Tom. Keep up the good work. I sit back down and start singing. I'm going to an air. I'm going to a factory. A biscuit factory. Well done, Tom. That was a great, Amy smiles. It was okay, if you like biscuits, Marcus grumbles. Now I can tell Mum and Dad about the school trip. Back at home. I'm excited to get home, and it sounds like everyone's in the kitchen. I have to risk bumping into Delia, as Mum and Dad are there too. I run in the kitchen only to hear Mum say, You were arrested? Rita, it's not as bad as it sounds. Just a small misunderstanding, that's all. Dad explains. Delia is shaking her head in a disapproving way. What exactly were you arrested for? Mum wants to know. Crimes against fashion, bad taste in music, take your pick, Delia says. Thanks for that, Delia. Actually, what happened was I accidentally took the kids to the wrong doodle wall. 
which was really the council's fault for not making it clear on the leaflet. So I went back to paint it over, and that's when I got arrested. <laughs> Tom better not have drawn a picture of me on that wall, Delia says right in front of me. I am here, you know, I remind her, then wish I hadn't. Well, did you? she asks again. Er, uh, I don't remember. If it was the council's fault, why did they arrest you? Someone must have reported me when I was painting over the doodles. But once I showed them the leaflet at the station, it was fine. I don't think anyone will be going to prison, Dad laughs, which is good to know. It seems like a good time to share my news. Guess what? I'm going on the school trip. A museum, Mum wonders. No, I'm going to a biscuit factory tomorrow. Shame you can't go though, isn't it? Delia adds, and I'm not expecting her to say that. Because our grandparents are getting remarried, or had you all forgotten? I'm guessing yes. Delia is looking at us and shaking her head again. No, it can't be. I'm shocked and so are Mum and Dad. Are you sure about that, Delia? Mum says, trying to remember the date. Delia keeps us waiting before saying, It's a joke. It's not tomorrow. It's the day after, of course. Your faces. She's almost smiling. Then Mum says, Honestly, Delia, you gave me a shock. I'll give, I've still got so much to do. I haven't got my suit ready and we need to give Bob his top hat. Dad adds, what I'm thinking, no we don't, not unless he wants to wear it all squashed. Speaking of the top hat, I can't find it anywhere. Has anyone seen it? Dad asks. Did anyone give it back to Bob already? I don't have Grandad's hat, Delia tells us. I keep quiet. Instead, I bring out my permission slip to get signed. It's for the biscuit factory trip. I can't forget it or I won't be allowed to go. And I'll have to stay with Mrs Worthington, which would be the worst. I'd feel sorry for Mrs Worthington, Delia tells me. Very funny. She is full of jokes today. I tell everyone, the school trip is going to be brilliant. There's loads of biscuits everywhere. And I'll even get to see caramel wafers being made too. I'm so excited. It's going to be hard to get to sleep. I'm thinking of all I'm still thinking about the biscuit factory when I go to bed. This is going to be the most spectacular school trip ever. Welcome to the biscuit factory. When we get to the biscuit factory, it's not exactly how I imagined. The hairnets were a surprise. And the lady giving us the talk wasn't exactly lively. And it's at this point all the ingredients are delivered into this large container via a special pipeline over there. Can everyone hear me? Yes. The ingredients are then carefully mixed for 10 minutes and 42 seconds exactly, the tour guy tells us. Amy puts up her hand. Excuse me, I can't see anything. Good point, Amy. That's right, it's all sealed to avoid any contamination, as every biscuit is to taste the same, she explains, not making it sound very exciting at all. Isn't that interesting, children? Mr. Fullerman asks enthusiastically. Silence. Does anyone have any questions? Our guide wonders. I do. When do we get to eat some biscuits? Norman wants to know. It's an excellent question, and it's one that needs answering. There are biscuits being made fresh today that will be available to taste at the end of the tour. We all do high fives. What biscuits are you making today? Amy asks. We produce a variety of biscuits in the factory, and today we're making some of our very best se sellers. Caramel wafers? I call out, fig rolls. Oh, I sigh. That's not what we wanted to hear. Come on, you lot. Who doesn't love a fig roll? Mr. Fullerman asks us. All our hands go up. I can promise you our fig rolls are delicious. They're very popular all over the world. Not with me, they're not, I whisper to Derek. Me neither, he agrees. 
I'll eat some with ice cream, Norman says. Me too, only without the fig rolls, I tell him. That's just ice cream, Amy points out. Exactly. Can everyone follow me? We're approaching the area where the figs are gently squeezed into the rolls. It's a complicated but thrilling process, as you can see. Please don't touch anything, our guide tells us sternly. <coughs> Who's over there? What's over there? Marcus asks, pointing to the, another room that's filled with equipment. Good question, our guide replies. We work on new recipes in there, and right now we're busy developing a range of healthier biscuits for today's market that contains less sugar, fat and very little flavour, delicates. And the guide gives him a look. I was going to say very little in them that isn't completely natural. That's great. Shall we get going? Mr Fullerman suggests. Yes, I know the owner at the factory is very keen to say hello and meet you all. We'd love that, wouldn't we, children? Is that when we get to eat some biscuits? Norman shouts out. I believe that's correct. This way, please, mind your step, the guide says, and we all follow after her. I wasn't expecting the factory to be like this. Were you? I say to Derek. No, I wasn't, he whispers as the tour continues. And this is where the biscuits are packaged and put into boxes, then sent to shops for people all around the world to enjoy. Apart from us, I say. Thank you for that. That was fascinating, wasn't it, children? Silence. Yes, Mr. Fullerman, we reply eventually. Although our actual tour is over, I'd like you to meet the person who organised your trip. She can also tell you anything you want to know about this factory and its biscuits. Our guide points to a lady holding a plate of biscuits. She's wearing the same outfit as us and a face mask too. Are those our biscuits? Norman asks very excitedly. Yes, I hope you enjoyed the tour, the owner asks. We are slightly more enthusiastic now and do a little cheer. Yeah! One of the reasons I was so keen to invite your school here was for the launch of our new biscuit. I'm guessing everyone here likes biscuits, right? I love biscuits the most, Marcus shouts. And I also think that there might be some children here today who like doodling too. Isn't that right, Mr Fullerman? That's true. I do have a very creative class. I like doodling and biscuits, Marcus yells again. Hang on, let me take off this mask to talk to you properly, she says. The last person I'm expecting to see is the lady from the wall. That's better. You can all hear me properly now, she tells us. Derek is nudging me a lot. It's the lady who saws on the doodle wall, Tom, Derek whispers, still nudging me. Oh no, I say. And we both try to hide. Amy is just as surprised as we are. It's the lady from the wall. Don't panic, she adds. Too late for that. I wanted to find the person who threw some doodles on my wall, the lady announces. Uh Uh-oh, what am I going to do now? I'm panicking. It wasn't our fault, Tom, Derek says. Keep calm, Tom, Amy adds, and we all try to hide behind solid. I took these photos of the wall before someone painted over it. Does anyone recognise them? I do. I'm trying to think when Marcus starts pointing at me. I know who did them. Those look like Tom's doodles, he tells the lady. He's over there. Are you Tom then? The lady adds. I can't keep hiding behind solid, so I start to slowly step forward when Derek pushes in front of me and says, I'm Tom. Then Norm says, I'm Tom. Even Marcus joins in. Um, I'm Tom too. Marcus, she knows you're not Tom, Derek has to remind him. Oh, well now I'm confused, Mr Fullerman. Can you help me out? The lady asks him. I have no idea what's going on either. Tom, do you want to explain? Not really, but I don't have a choice. Thanks for trying to keep me out of trouble, guys. I say. Let me, I'm Tom. I did those doodles. None of us drew on your wall on purpose. Honestly, miss. It's Miss Wafer. I'm the owner of the biscuit factory. (coughs) Are you the real Karen Wafer? Amy asks. We all gasp as she's properly well known. (coughs) 
My whole name is Karen M. Wafer. I'm sure you can work it out. Miss Wafer, we didn't deliberately draw on your wall. My dad got the address mixed up. We wanted to go to the county doodle wall. I carry on trying to explain what happened. Marcus puts his hand up again. I want to point out that I drew on the right wall, he tells us smugly. Typical Marcus. Anyway, I carry on talking. We all copied my poster homework and then I told everyone to write their names on the wall because their doodles were so good. So it's really my fault, not theirs. Thanks, Tom, my friends say. The lady puts down her plate of biscuits and takes out her phone and shows it to me. So can I be clear? These are your doodles, Tom, isn't that right? Yes, they're mine. Well, I have to say, she says, then pauses. I love them. They are really fantastic, especially the freaky monster with the sunglasses, (coughs) the lady tells me. Er, that's actually my sister, Delia, I have to explain. I'm just glad I took a picture before your dad painted over the wall. Did he? Almost. So listen, Tom, we'd like to use your style of doodles for the brand new biscuits we're making. Really? I'm shocked. I was not expecting that. We'll talk to your parents, obviously, but your artwork will be on the packets. I'd also like to donate some art equipment to your school. (coughs) How does that sound? I think that sounds great, doesn't it, Tom? Mr. Fullerman says. Wow, does that mean my doodles will be on the new biscuit posters too? I ask. That's right, Tom, Miss Wafer tells me. That's fantastic, I say, and everyone celebrates with me. Even Marcus joins in. I'm pleased for you, Tom, he says, which is almost nice of him. This really has been the most spectacular school trip ever. Calm down, Tom. Miss Wafer, give, Miss Wafer gives us some biscuits to taste, and we get to take some home with us too. I discovered that fig rolls aren't as bad as I thought they were, but I leave most on a plate in the kitchen for everyone to help themselves, because I'm a nice person and I've had enough fig rolls for a while. It's the 1970s. 1970. You are invited. You are invited to the wedding. Mavis Ethel Gates and Robert Edward Gates who are renewing their vows at the leafy green old folks home. The theme is 1970s disco. Come ready to dance. The fossils are having a 90s and 1970s themed wedding. So mum and dad let me doodle on my suit. As it fits with the style. I don't mind wearing it now. They were both surprised and pleased to hear my doodles were being used for the biscuit posters. Even Delia said, well done. I kept quiet about drawing on her on the wall. I didn't tell her I found the envelope the bloke gave me. I just snuck it into her room and hid it under a pile of rock weeklies. Hopefully she doesn't know it was me. Fingers crossed. I decide not to look inside the envelope in case it was some sort of love letter. <coughs> Yuck. The next day, Granny and Grandad's wedding. It's Granny and Grandad's wedding day and I should be looking forward to it. But there's a problem. Grandad's hat still looks like squat. It still looks like this. Squashed. I can't fix it now. I'll have to hand it over like that. Hurry up, Tom. We're all ready to go. Delia shouts at me through the door. I'm coming, I shout back. Then I hide that hat behind my back before going out. Nice suit, Tom, Delia says. Thanks, and you look exactly the same. Did you leave that envelope in my room? (coughs) She asks, which is awkward. That depends, I say. On what? Whether you're cross with me? I was cross. But as it's Granny and Grandad's wedding, I've made an effort to get over it, she tells me. Sorry, I got it got lost in my room, I explain, (coughs) which is kind of true. What was it? A love letter, I add. No, Tom, it wasn't. I've missed out on something. Come on, we'd better go, she tells me. Make the most of being nice. Make the most of me being nice, Delia tells me, before she spots the squashed up hat. Is that Grandad's top hat? <coughs> no. Yes, I splutter. How 
How did you do it, Tom? I don't know. Stuff just happens, I say. Now, Dad starts calling us from downstairs. Hurry up, you two. Come on, Tom. We'd better go. Tell them it was an accident, Delia says to me. But it was an accident, I say. I'm sure it's no big deal that you squashed a precious family heirloom. Delia's enjoying this. There you both are. We have to get Grandad to the wedding. We can't be late, Dad tells us. Love the suit, Tom. Very creative, Grandad tells me. You look lovely too, Delia, Grandad smiles. The only thing that's missing is my lucky top hat. Is it at the back? Is it back from the cleaners, Grandad asks us. I think Tom might be able to help you with that. Delia gives me a shove forward. I'm sorry, Grandad. It was an accident, (coughs) I say, and bring out the hat. Dad and Grandad have a long, silent look at it. How did that happen? Dad asks. Delia sat on it, I say, and she goes crazy. Tom, don't you dare. Okay, it was me. I sat on it, but I'm really sorry. I tell them quickly. I can see why you were so worried, Tom, but there's no need, Grandad says. All you had to do was this. Grandad puts the hat inside, his hand inside the hat and sort of bashes it back out. Like magic, it pops back into shape. Ta-da! Wow, you mean I could have done that all this time, I ask. That's right, Tom. That's how we kept it in the family for all these years. Shall we go? I don't want to keep Mavis waiting. Another 50 years of joy awaits, Grandad laughs. Delia asks to take a few photos before we go. Though surprisingly, she doesn't smile very much. Everyone look up, she tells us. And Tom, I can see what you're doing. Ha ha, bunny ears. The leafy green old folks home looks very fancy. Everyone's Everyone's been decorated with streamers and balloons for the wedding. Teacup Tony and the saucers have set up their equipment ready to play. (coughs) Uncle Kevin, Auntie Alice and the cousins are here waiting for us. You're running late, Uncle Kevin says, tapping his watch. The 1970s suit you, Kevin, Dad tells us. (coughs) The cousins look happy. Not. They're not keen on their bow ties. When the wedding starts, it's more fun than I was expecting. We all have kazoos on our seats and we have to play... Here comes the bride, as Granny Mavis rollerblades down the aisles at speed. I'm here! Mum whispers, she chose the batwing dress especially to make an entrance. Impressive, I agree. My Granny's a legend, they both are. A lady called Agnes helps them renew their vows, as she, com- as she compliments everyone on their excellent kazoo playing. <coughs> Agnes has a large pineapple hat on her head, which is a bit distracting. Granny and Grandad saw say their vows, then both read out poems. I found myself looking at Agnes's hat more than listening to what's going on. I start blowing my kazoo at the wrong time until Mum nudges me. Then everyone cheers and claps as the fossil the fossils are remarried all over again. It's double. It's doubly great that dog zombies are playing at the party as well. And Granny said I could invite a few of my friends, so I did. Norman has already arrived and made himself home by the buffet. Amy and Derek are there too. Excellent doodle suit, Tom, she tells me. Nice biscuits as well, Norman says with his mouth full. Miss Wafer offered to donate them after she spoke to Mum and Dad about my doodles. I explain happily. Although looking at Norman, I think he might have eaten half of them already. Hey Norman, are you going to be okay to play the drums? Derek wonders, because Norman and Sugar don't mix well. Sure, I'll be fine, he tells us, and then he starts spinning around. Whee! Which is not a good sign. And there's another problem looming. Teacup Tony and the sorcerers are due to start playing and get the party started. But he's asleep. Tony's peaked already. He's gone for a power nap and the DJ's not here yet either, says Dad, who looks a bit concerned. Maybe dog zombies could play a few songs early, Mum suggests, looking at me. 
We'll do it, I say. We've still got the kazoos. We can all join in. I'm ready now, Norman shouts and runs over to the drum kit, which is worrying. Crash, 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 bang, 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 crash, bang, crash, bang, crash, bang, walla, walla, walla. Sorry, I think I'm a bit hyper. I might go and drink some water, Norman tells us. It's a good idea. I can play the kazoo again, Amy suggests. Thanks, Amy, but we really need Norman for the drums. Come on, Tom, now's your chance. Can you play something while your grandparents walk in? Mum asks me. They'll be here soon. I can, but I need to be as quick to be quick as Uncle Kevin has overheard us and looks keen to join in. But as we're discussing what to play, Delia sits down at the drum kit. <coughs> For goodness sake. I'm surrounded by idiots, she says, and starts to play the drums really well. Whoa, I didn't know she could even play an instrument, I say to Derek. Me neither, he agrees. She's good, Amy adds. Mum and Dad look surprised too. She kept that quiet, Mum says. We're such a musical family, like the Partridge family, Dad laughs. The fossils make an entrance while Delia plays an excellent drum roll. Then Derek and I start singing the biscuit song with Amy on kazoo. And I can't believe I'm saying this. Delia on the drums. It seems to get everyone in the party mood, including Grandad, who picks up some spoons and does his version of teacup Tony and the sorcerer's <coughs> nice cup of tea. We stop for a very well-deserved snack break while he carries on freestyling with Delia. As I'm watching them play some taps, someone taps me on the shoulder. Is that Delia on the drums? A bloke asks. It is. I had no idea she could play like that, I tell him. I did, but I've not seen her play live before. She's really good, he says. I look up and suddenly realise who it is. It's the bloke who came to see Delia. What are you doing at my grandparents' wedding? I'm your DJ. I'd better get set up. Aren't you in a band? I ask. Yeah, that's right. We asked Delia to join, but she never got back to us. I dropped round some Ben photos and a letter. You did give her that envelope, didn't you? The bloke wants to know. Yes, I did, I tell him. Eventually, I add really quietly. I'll see if I can catch up with her later. Better get the 1970 disco going, he tells me. Looking at the cousins, I can tell they can't wait. We all have a really good time singing, dancing and eating. I'm extra pleased that everything's all sorted with the doodle wall now. Mum's happy with her dress. Grandad's top hat is all fine. And even Delia looks as if she could be joining her own band too. I've never heard, heard of most of the songs that the DJ was playing, but I think I might, m might now be a good time to ask him for a very special request. Congratulations to Bob and Mavis. This song goes out to Delia and it's her favourite band ever. So here's a little bit of One Dimension just for her. Well, I thought it was funny. Smiley face. Tom! A few weeks later... I'm walking home from school with Derek and we're discussing important things like why does Mrs Knapp still insist on seeing the register when we walk around the corner and see <coughs> the brand new <coughs> my doodles on the poster wall which look spectacular. <coughs>